and what's up guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your turtle, of course, is the Scarender. And today we're going up against Verdelet. And you guys know exactly what this guy is. And I've been following for some time. We're never really battled. But, uh, you know, that's hardly been a, like, a bad thing or anything like that. It's actually, we, we enjoyed each other's content. And I'm definitely a huge fan of Verdelet for his playstyle. He's much more... He's not too much for stalling, he's much for being overpowering his opponent and have a good game idea and actually decide to um, often, you know, trying to achieve that game idea through his playstyle. So very, very impressive overall. Double check this guy out. I know that the guys that are following me are most likely I'll to check this guy out and for good reasons. Anyway, guys, um, like I said previously, my capture card has not come yet, but at least, you know, getting some content up and I really wanted to upload this battle because it was definitely a very, very fun one. And this is a custom tier that the Verla has done, so I'm gonna link that down below, the rules and stuff like that. If you wanna challenge me in the future with this, I will be completely fine with it. And just overall, it's a very, very thought, good thought of idea. No bans yet on it, but it probably will come if, if Pokes becomes too powerful. The general idea is that you can only use the middle stage Pokemon, so the Pokemon needs to have three stages. And you can, like I said, you can only use the lowest and the middle uh, stage, and you can't use Evialite on the middle stage, only lowest. Which means that um, Porygon is gonna be quite powerful. But uh, yeah, other than that, you know, it's like a fast preview on what it is all about. Now, do a fast preview of the match itself. So, anyway, let's get to it. Also, I might butchering the name because I'm not too accustomed to the middle stage names, or rather, I haven't really thought of them too much. So, uh, I gotta do the best of my abilities really. So anyway, he has Porygon, Staravia, the Lesser Evolution of Garchomp, Combuscan, Kadabra, and of course, the Quilladin. I myself is using Timber, <laughs> I think it is called, uh, Porygon, Magneton, Crappinch, Grotel, and Fletchinder. And basically, I knew that, like I said there, that Verla is a quite a powerful trainer, so I can't really bring like the A stuff of that tier that he is defined because I had a good idea on which Pokemon that could be you know potential threats so I decided to use a few of those that could work but also having two Pokemon that I know can kind of catch them off guard and one of them being Fletchinder and the other one being Trapinch. Trapinch is actually quite formidable but of course it's being overpowered in the higher evolutions but as this evolution go Trapinch is you know 100 base uh, share force with inability. It's quite formidable and I have a lot of fun trying to use it and it has quick attack So that's a thing and they got life or wanted to be able to take out necessary things. It's gonna go down So with all this my guys, let's go So anyway first starting I'm just gonna start off with my Logan which is basically just it hits hard on everything in his team quite well besides the Saravia and there's no gonna really start up with that. He's gonna start with Lax Line which is Quilladin and he missed his first lead seed, which is, you know, it's not gonna matter in the long run, but this fire punch does roughly 50%, but there is leftovers. I was like, oh, okay. We can't play around this. Uh, even if I hit him with another fire punch and he will hit me with a lead seed, I will not be able to take him out and lose a lot of HP. So I'm just gonna go into my Growler, which is a Grotatel, and do basically hoping for him to go for a lead seed. And, um, yeah. As I get to it, might looks like I have a good position, but really, uh, my <laughs> my Grotel or my Growler can't really do anything against his Quilladin. So he's gonna set up Spikes, and that is, like I said, really okay. Uh, rather that than bulk up, so I'm just gonna go for my own rocks just to have it up. And after this, I'm gonna go into my Fletchinder, because my Fletchinder has... Um, or could probably avoid it off and doesn't... it isn't affected by Spikes since it's flying. So I was thinking that could be my best back bet, so Zindvax is coming in there and uh, you go for Lead Seed and that is just shit, really. Um, I have Citrus, so I'm not too worried, but uh, at the same time I do want to have this thing at full HP as long as possible. Because it actually works around quite well, and of course Acrobatic is not that good as long as I have a Berry on me, obviously. So anyway, it will switch out and I'll switch out. Or rather, I'll go for Swole Stance, of course, that's trying to set up against it. He's going to go to Fairy Holds On, and uh, basically at this spot, I was like, he's going to try to take me out. He's going to go for Dragon Claw, Outright, whatever. So I'm just going to hope he's going to scoff and go for a me first here, and uh, basically hoping to take him out. And uh, yeah, <laughs> probably like the funniest thing ever. So I do outspeed here, and he went for an attacking move, obviously, since I go for a me first. 
and my affliction will go for an outrage, which is actually enough to take out this lesser evolution of Gotchum. That is awesome. And of course, a lot of residual damage is coming my way with Rocky Helmet and Rough Skin. And uh, yeah. And now you might ask yourself, when Kedera came in, when I didn't go for acrobatics, I was actually locked into Outrage. I didn't think that could happen, but it is a move with the two three hits, so that's fine. It I uh, obviously we lose our both the folks here, both sweepers quite early there, and that was awful, really, <laughs> really, really awful. So anyway, I expect him to switch out here, and I went for a flash cannon because Volt Switch is resistant to his Quilladin, um, and I felt that that was probably his safest move. It was either that to bring his Combuskin, if you want to go for a Combuskin, that, that would be an excellent play. But I do take out the uh, Quilt in here, which is awesome. He doesn't really possess that much power for my team, but at least I don't have to worry about too much hazards. So Perry Perry is going in the Combuskin, and you know, I've gone up against these guys before, so I'm not too worried. So I'm just gonna go into my Logan, and uh, basically, I probably should have gone for Drain Punch here, to be honest. I went for a knockoff. Uh, because I did see that uh, he went for an Endure, which means it is the reversal set, he wanna put himself in a bad position. But I did not expect him to be a mix set with Flamethrower, and that does so much damage. Uh, so I knock off the, um, <laughs> the weakness policy, which obviously wasn't gonna really matter. And uh, it was a crit too, which obviously not gonna matter either. And it is resistor after all. So I decided to... I, I don't really wanna sack this guy off just yet, so I'm gonna go into my Zumbra. Which is the Paragon, a quite dangerous one. And um, yeah, basically, I was hoping for him going for another flamethrower, and luckily for me, he did just that. And uh, yeah, obviously, doesn't do too much of a damage. And uh, at this point, I did expect him to go for an NGO again, so I'm just gonna go for recover because uh, I really, really don't want this thing to um, be in a position where I can't really take it out. And um, yeah, overall, Combustion is just generally like dangerous. So anyway, I go for a um, discharge here in case he tries to go for a double, um, a double endure, but it doesn't do that. It goes to his own Porygon, and um, yeah, my discharge will hit the land and what whatnot. But Evil Light is just too much power here, and I get the paralyzation. So I'm gonna hope for him to be fully paralyzed, to be honest. And um, yeah, I went to my log and hope for after this to go for Drain Punch. But he will not be fully paralyzed, and that really, really, really sucks, because my Logan will go down. So definitely a bad play on my part, I should definitely sack something else here. You can see that Logan was actually quite a formidable force to be reckoned with in this game, and I didn't really treat him like that. So going into my Glaive, because I know Glaive can take it out within each Q, and uh, I shouldn't really worry about that whatsoever. So Earthquake is common, and it does... Almost enough, he just survived with 1 HP, and that is just terrifying, because of course, my glaive, my trap inch has Earthquake and two stab moves in conjunction with a quick attack, uh, so it is supposed to be my late game sweeper, and it went down way before it should have, and uh, yeah, basically face at that point, because I was so sure I was gonna take out the Porygon, so he will sack his Porygon off now, because of of course, 1 HP is just, it's not enough, and having Paralyzation means it can't outspeed anything, so good call, good call. <laughs> and uh, yeah, basically, I'm gonna go to Staravia now, and uh, I knew that he could go for a U turn or go for Brave Bird, so I basically stayed in because I really don't want him to get a momentum from the U turn. He went directly for the Brave Bird, and uh, yeah, Reckless and whatnot, I will barely, barely live that. And my retaliation will be the crunch and it will actually be enough to take out the Saravia. So at this point, I was kind of fine. I had a good East position. I knew I had a Combuscan left and um, Kadabra could maybe be managed with Magneton. I wasn't sure of that. Just so gonna go into this Combuscan yet again or the Puri Puri. And um, yeah, like I said here, I really I, I have nothing to gain from switching out. So I'm just gonna stay and taking this hit. And then I go to my Paragon, and since I went for Recover last time, when his uh, Combust was out, I know that he knew, that I knew exactly what he was gonna go all about. So with that in mind, I decided to actually attack him, because I didn't do that last time, and I don't really want to take a Flamethrower, or a strong, rather strong one reversal. But he actually goes to Endure anyway, and that puts the nail in the coffin, because 
That means that I'll put in 1 HP, my discharge will not paralyze him, and we have trouble. Now I have a fast sweep on our hands, and the Pokemon that could have dealt with us in the late game is dead because of my misprediction <laughs> with his own Porygon. So this Combuscan will come through, and Birdlet will destroy what is left of my team, and yeah, basically this is, like I said, GG. This was definitely a good game though, I think we both did a lot of like fun choices for our teams, you know, try to get back on the horse. And it turned out just barely a victory in my opponent's favor, and like I said, it was a judgement call on whether or not I was gonna go for an enjoy yet again, and um, yeah, that definitely ended up in my annihilation. And um, yeah, like I said, it was definitely a good, a good game, I really feel that we both got showcased and really... I think I got a good momentum with my Pokemons, but his strength prevailed in the end. And uh, yeah, there were only so many choices I had left from that po position, really. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this battle, because like I said, I sure did. Um, just looking back at the game, there were not too many choices I could have really done. Like I said, the Trap Pinch wasn't like a winning condition for me. I knew I could bait him out with that. And I. It never like hit me that it could not have killed the Porygon, and him living with 1 HP proves that, that it was kinda close, and um, besides that, the, the, the last things were just predictions overall, and our both team were quite whittled down at the end there, and we're, we were both out of options, and he plays very very aggressive, and that means that his Pokemon will go down and my Pokemon will go down, so it's basically like a, like a domino and see which bricks the still stands. And he came out on top this time because he actually did the right place in the, in the get-go there and, the, and definitely in the end. And I definitely ha didn't have the guts to go for a recover at that point, which I should have, really. I felt that, that oh, I should have just played it safe. But then again, a reversal from that range should have been, you know, pretty much more than enough to take me out on a second get-go because it is stabbed and whatnot. And it was such a low HP before even the endure, so it was actually quite dangerous at that point. Uh, anyway guys, no, thank you all for watching, and I hope that the capture card comes tomorrow. I know it is in Sweden by tracking numbers, so I hope to see that. And if you haven't checked out the Verlet channel before, do that. This guy is very, very underappreciated and should have much more subs than I have today. Like I said, he has a good battle style, has a good attitude, and just overall a very, very good person. And I love watching his things, because his uploads are more about how to conquer a player, really really get in depth on what is worth thinking about when going up against one another battler and that just overall makes a great, great content and very enjoyable to watch. So make sure to check this guy out. And um, yeah, with that in mind guys, you know as always, don't forget to leave a like and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and remember, sky is limits. <laughs> so have a good day guys and take care, right? Bye.